We're back in business. Look what arrived today. My 20 alligator clips. They only cost 17 bucks. They're the big ones too. So they don't have to fimble with the um, little bits of the little ends. They keep dropping off and slipping out of your fingers. So that's not a bad buy actually. So I'll get some leads made up. The zinc hexacyano ferrite with the um, carbon in it has sort of dried. That will be ready for harvesting. And maybe an up and coming project. I got this little thing. It's a um, single phase to three phase variable speed drive. Uh, I was thinking about making. Uh, this is my test coil. You're going to make little U shaped co um, coils. Gonna, I was thinking about making a linear motor so I could some, um, just a lot. Uh, levitate some aluminium. <laughs> I know it's a bit expensive just so you can see a piece of aluminium float around. Uh, this thing costs two hundred dollars, but it's pretty good. You can add extra things here, like um, other switches to remote control the mechanism. So this should be good, but I don't know if I want to short it out because I put that coil just for a test on that dead battery, which is about seven volts. And it pulled out 12 amps through there. I might scale it down and make smaller coils. And then I can make it sort of like two foot long. Um, that would be probably an interesting thing to do, is make a linear motor. Apparently they have really good torque for lifting things. I was watching um, some 1976 videos on it. Uh, and instead of, because you have to drive it with three phase, each coil has to be a phase out so the plate moves and plus levitates. That's if this is only rated at 2.2 kilowatts. Though so I couldn't find any um, heavier ones. So interesting. So I'll um, set up some leads now and get that cell. We can look at that cell and see what we get all right till then i strip some wire these things here they're great they have your little gauges different sizes and it's just clip pull and it's stripped in seconds i have a heap of this wire here which i was going to make the coils out of but i got more than enough it's um good solid oh well it's not solid it's stranded copper cable so it's really good it's much better than that other stuff so yeah all right i'll get some soldering done and i'll be back back i have our have new new alligator leads on some good copper wire good thick stuff um clarify something first i made a mistake in the other video the build up is on the positive side of both of the cells not the negative the negative side is the um iron 3 hexacyano ferrite which is wrapped up in in the tracing paper so um we'll check some resistance of the cell first something i always meaning to do but always forget to do so we'll do the manganese ones on this side and it's got the carbon added and this is the plain metal hexacyano ferrite cell with no carbon only the um carbon felt it's on so we'll check the voltage first so that's the negative side and that one's the positive side these clips have way better um pressure on them so the manganese cell has only one point i mean 0 0.1 volt and it's resistance on 200 is increasing. Hmm, okay, okay. Strange. So we probably would increase heaps more maybe. It's not stopping. We'll just disconnect and connect it. Okay, so yeah, it's still climbing. 
Yeah, whatever that is. It'll be up near 200 maybe. I would have thought it would have just stayed as a resistance test. Okay, do the other cell. Its resistance starts off straight up at 186. And increasing. Hmm, strange behavior. Alright, um, we'll check a short circuit. Uncharged cell. So we're on the 20 milliamp range. Doing the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate one with no added carbon. And we're 16, 17 milliamps and dropping. And we'll do the same with the manganese one. And we're only eight max and dropping. Wow, that's a difference already. Oh, could you see that? Yeah. Um, yeah, interesting. So it looks like the um, added carbon is sort of hindering us on our cell. Well, this one's the plain one with no added extra carbon, only the carbon felt it's applied to. Same ratio-ish. One gram on this one of each material though. Slightly higher on this one. So, um, which one should we check out first? <laughs> hmm. So I'll um, give them each a charge, but one at a time. Uh, I'll keep the charge at two volts. I won't go over that. Uh, I'll start off with this one, the plain one, so we can get an idea of that, because we've sort of seen the other ones running. This one's similar, except for it's got activated carbon compared to the, that, that cell. Alright, so I'll set that up, put it on the charge, and um, I'll get back in an hour. Charge voltage on the um, plain zinc hexacyanoferrate cell 0.2, so we're slightly up by 0.1 other volt as well. Okay, the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate cell, I just put it on charge. Oh, what happened? It was at 400 milliamps and dropped rapidly. As you can see, it's like a ski slope. Did I um bump a lead while I was trying to connect this. No, that's all good. Hmm, that was interesting. And on the mold, on the meter for the charger, just above the two volt line, they were about 2.3 going by the data logger. All right. So um, the peak was interesting at the, it was just under 450 milliamps. Hmm, I thought that cell would have been, well, it's a bit early to say, but I thought that would work worse. Okay, I'll harvest the um, zinc hexacyanoferrate with the two grams of feather carbon and one gram of graphite. Um, the feather carbon is normally attracted to magnets. There's, there is action, see? And if you have a real close look at that, you can't see any of the blackness of the carbon. It's a bit hard through this camera. But I can't see any traces of black. If you look at that, the carbon's, the um, zinc hexacyanoferrate has bonded completely to all of the carbon. So normally with a 500 mil batch I get around about 3 grams. So we have 3 grams of carbon all up added. So we should really have 6 grams. Oh no, we got more. What's going on? How does that work? Maybe the carbon's helped it we're at 9.3 grams. Um, perhaps the carbon helps absorbing all of the um, hexacyanoferrate where normally it just gets lost. 
I definitely don't get 9.3 grams out of one batch. I did four batches and got 12 the way I did it. I put this one through the filter though, but that shouldn't matter. The filter probably should take a bit more out of it than letting it. Oh, no, maybe not, because when I um, siphon it off, some of the particles do go up and out. So maybe filtering is the better way to do it. You get better yield. So really we had five grams of zinc sulfate, five grams of um, potassium hexacyanoferrate, three grams of carbon, and our yield is 9.3 grams, 9.2 or whatever. I hate that when the scales just decide to turn themselves off. You know, I come back and find it flat, but it's turned itself off when we need it. Turns itself on by itself, I think, or something. So yeah, okay. So this stuff, hmm, it's going to be quite interesting in a cell, I, th I would imagine. So I think we'll have to do the same with the, um, that, uh, the Iron 3 version, or what I might do, I got some, um, zinc powdered from some experiments, which I might stick into the blue stuff instead and see what happens because then that zinc powder will be the donor for the zinc ions and um it's not very conductive that other stuff anyway that zinc i'll show you what i mean about the zinc i have zinc is down in there which is sort of i had that rod in there and it was in one of those round cells and we just charged and charged and charged and the zinc dissolved into like really fine powder but non-conductive so i might stick that in the blue stuff as a zinc donor on the next cell or well, no second cell after that one because i'll um make one of them so we can gauge the difference and then i'll add the zinc metal and we're about Four minutes away from a charge on this one. It's um, it's a bit weird in its charging, and the voltage dropped down for some reason. Oh yes, power supply I think, because now the needle. Uh, it's like the same spot I think. Depends what angle you look at. If you look up there, it looks past. If you look down there, it looks the other side of it. But that's for um, 40 volts, so the calibration might be a little bit out. Alright, I'll get back in three minutes. Okay, we're at one hour. I'll just disconnect the charge and connect the other end. Yes, all right, now we're doing 20 milliamps again for our um, discharge load, and here we go. Ah, can't stop it, damn. All right, so it's holding 1.9, it's looking okay so far bit early though. But I'm very impressed with the um, the larger alligator clips don't roll around in your fingers. Much better. Alright, I've got to go put my phone on charge. Uh, so I'll um, get back in a while and we'll see how we go. Hopefully we get a good run. So this is the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate without any added carbon into the mix. All right. Okay, back. Um, only 55 minutes so far in an hour's charge. 29 milliwatt hours and 19 milliamp hours on its first run. So now I'll um, charge up manganese dioxide and the activated carbon one and we'll check and compare and then we'll give them another charge at a later date. A bit longer maybe. 
All right, so I'll um, connect that up. I'll write the results down on my little cheat sheet and I'll get back. Okay, it's been an hour with the manganese dioxide one. Had another mishap. That was off of the data logger's charging cable end, which didn't come with the data logger. I bought it off eBay. That's probably why it explains it's so thin. All right, so I'll disconnect the charge. Okay, we're at two volts. Yeah, stop the monitoring. Same load, and we'll see if we get a longer runtime or a less runtime. Hmm. All right, so I'll be back. Got it. Okay, back. It was looking good until it got to under 1.3 and then thump, just dropped straight off. 52 minutes and 47. So it's slightly under. Not by much. It's um, 18 milliamp hours, 28 milliwatt hours. Well, I didn't think that would be the case. Hmm. So I'll, um, Go round two tomorrow and test them up again and see what happens. We have a higher voltage bounce back, 1.2. I think the other one was similar. All right, I'll get back on um, tomorrow. Okay, back the next day. I've got the manganese dioxide one on charge for an hour. Now, just disconnect the charge. Um, yesterday's run was 52 minutes with an hour's charge, so let's see if it's improving. Um, I found the cell today at um, 0 0.2 volts, so it's dropping faster than the other ones for some reason. That was, um, this one is activated carbon on the negative side with manganese dioxide on the positive. All right, so disconnect that. Notice with the um, two volt charge, it's around about two, stays at two volts, where I think the last test we did was 2.1. So starting our test. All right, we'll see what we get. Okay, slight, slightly better. Uh, one hour and 15 minutes. We got 26 milliamp hours and 38 milliwatt hours out of the um, manganese dioxide cell and active carbon. So now we'll try the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate cell with no added carbon, only the felt, and I'll give that a charge for an hour and see if that's just slightly up. Okay, we're back for our hour and three minutes on charge. Um, charge curve's a bit weird and unstable. So I'll just swap the leads over. Okay, we should have voltage. Oh, we're a bit low. We're only 1.9. This is the um, plain zinc hexacyanoferrate coated just onto the carbon felt. And starting our 20 milliamp test. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, back. Something happened to that cell. It's um, not very good. Uh, this was the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate and the metal iron 3 version of the cell. It had an hour's charge and no, nah, but the voltage is high, 1.6 for some reason. But the runtime is only 24 minutes and we only got 8 milliwatt hours, 13 milliwatt hours so not looking good what i might do 
change the cutoff voltage to say 0.5 and um, up the voltage on the charge to around about 2.5 I think. Oh, maybe 3 there. I'll adjust it when I set it up so it's 2.5 and uh, I'll give it another charge and um, I'll get back. Uh, adjusted the voltage to 2.5 and we were drawing around about, we're doing about 200 milliamps now in the cell. Okay, wondering if the cell's bypassing the carbon and just acting on that coating at the back of that cell. But the electrolyte is changing colour, so maybe the zinc hexacyanoferrate has just come off and it's just floating around. back with a higher charge so it spiked it went to 2.9 for some reason then dropped right down and slowly going up again so we'll disconnect the charge and it looks like we're holding the 2.1 now for a bit we should have a voltage in a minute yep 2.1 so we'll see how the cell performs with a higher charge this is the um, plain cell with no added carbon, only the carbon felt. Starting now. Gave the data logger a little bit of a padding so it's not vibrating as much. Alright, looking good for now. So we'll see if it goes longer than 24 minutes. Probably really needs a zinc donor other than the um, electrolyte. Because I noticed on the other plates I pulled apart, they were plating with zinc. So I'm um, not sure if the zinc comes off and goes back in place or it just keeps consuming. But those two cells with the same electrolyte, I just added extra water and they still keep sort of running. They've had multiple charges, so we should have almost depleted the zinc out of there maybe. Hmm, tricky. Uh, okay, we're back. Um, one hour and 35 on a higher charge, so 2.5 volts and the cell really um, starts looking better. For reasons. So we got 32 milliamp hours and 44 milliwatt hours out of that run an hour and 35 minutes so I'll um, set up the manganese one and give it the same voltage charge for an hour and we'll see what power density that one's got okay back with the manganese one it's been slightly over one hour and three minutes disconnecting the charge and connect the other end Well, when I put the manganese one on charge, it had zero voltage this time. So I'm acting strange. Okay, we got a voltage now. Okay, starting our test. Alright, let's see if we get more than one hour and 35. Alright. Okay, the manganese one still underperforming. One hour and 26 minutes, uh, 43 milliwatt hours, and 29 milliamp hours. It's only like one milliwatt hour off, and about four on milliamps. So not too far behind the other one, but amazingly strange because it's manganese dioxide versus just the hexacyanoferrate and the um, felt. Hmm, could be something to do with the binder maybe, but they've both been bound with the same amount, but the carbon may absorb more of it, so yeah. So um, tomorrow I reckon I'll um, try that one, that's the feather carbon and the manganese dioxide type of cell, as from the previous, so we were just waiting on leads, so we can compare the feather carbon with the activated carbon. Alright, I'll see everyone tomorrow. Okay, a little bit over time, I'll just um, 
We're testing out the feather carbon and manganese dioxide cell versus the manganese dioxide and activated carbon cell. So the last time the activated carbon cell was uh, 43 milliamp hours, no milliwatt hours, sorry. So I'll disconnect the charge. And reconnect the other end. Okay, should have a voltage, yep. Right. 20 milliamps again. I put the cutoff voltage down to 0.5 as I did yesterday, I think. Starting. Alright, so yesterday's run on the activated carbon cell was. 29 milliamp hours and 43 milliwatt hours and an hour and 25 minutes. So we'll see if the feather carbon performs a bit better. Alright, I'll be back. I wanted to get back to the 0.9 cutoff voltage but um, missed it by a bit. So we're at 40 milliamp hours, 55 milliwatt. And we're going down to 0.5 on this one run. So that's that cell. That was um, feather carbon on the iron three side and manganese on the zinc hexacyano ferrite side positive. So I'll keep I'll give the um, activated carbon cell another go or a few tries, see if it gets better as we do it. I think we can rule out using activated carbon, but still early. I've got another couple of tests I should do on it, so I'll get back. Okay, it never ran for much longer anyway, so it ran for two hours and nine minutes and 44 milliamp hours and 57 milliwatt hours. So it's slightly higher maybe in surface area with the feather carbon than activated charcoal. So I'll um, give the activated one another charge up and uh, I'll get back. Oh, this time I might just um, bypass the um, data logger with the charge and just set up a timer. Same voltage and see if there's any difference. Because I'm going through that really thin wire on the data logger. And it's long. And it's also, because that end fell off, it's... Um, steel core wire as well so I'll um, just charge it straight off the charge controller here and see what we get okay been an hour um, I've set the timer on the laptop so I'll just disconnect that oh maybe not Alright, disconnect the charger. I put the multimeter on the um, across the charger and the battery and um, only 220 milliamps at the start and dropping, so not much different using the data logger wires. Alright, we should have a voltage. And I think I can just start a test and it will reset the grid. Yep. Alright, well maybe it's getting better that cell. This is the um, active carbon and manganese. Well, I was sort of hoping the um, active carbon would be better because that would be cheaper. Do its thing. Okay, back. Um, not much of a surprise. Look at that. It ran for two hours and two minutes. So the um, feather carbon one ran for two hours and nine. And power energy on this one, 41 milliamp hours compared to 47. And 56 milliwatt hours compared to, I think, 57. So not much difference there in energy wise or in capacity, really. So I'll um, do another charge like that again tomorrow on both cells and compare them again. Okay, 
Okay, trying the manganese dioxide and the feather carbon cell again, connected straight to the charge controller. Same voltage as it was the other day. Hmm, it looks like it's going up a bit today, the temperature's different. But, anyway, so we can get rid of this. I don't know why it does that, stupid out of date computer. All right, we got 20 milliamps. Oops, better connect up the lead. So disconnect it from the charge. Connect it to the data logger. Okay, right, yeah. All right, we're 2.1 today. And starting our test. Um, I've noticed the brown stuff, I won't do it now, but it's growing on the neg um, positive plate like those ones. It hasn't done that before until I mentioned it on this one and now it's doing it there. So I don't know what that is. Maybe that cell's sort of breaking apart. But the other cells we tested were in the liquid for over four weeks and they didn't do anything like that. So not sure what's going on with that brown stuff. So we'll see if this one performs a bit better again. And then might increase the charges slightly. I know they run for a long time on a four hour charge, but that could be overkill, but nevertheless it still charges and discharges longer. Alright, I'll get back. Okay, back with the uh, feather carbon cells run. Two hours and 23 minutes, so that's up a little bit more. It, um, it was two hours and nine minutes last time. We got 64 milliwatt hours and 49 milliamp hours, so that's still all right. I'll um, do another run on the um, plain zinc hexacyanate with no feather carbon cell, straight off the charger to see if that makes a difference and see where that level sits. Because at the moment it's pretty hard to judge which one's actually better or not better. It's um, too fine a closeness to it, so. Yeah, so we could actually make them out of um, activated carbon, but then again, we may have a little bit more performance in the feather carbon, but it's not much. Guess you would weigh out the costs. Hmm. So I'll set that charge up and get back. Okay, the results for the plain cell with no activated carbon or feather carbon in it. Uh, one hour and 21 milliamp hours and 24 milliwatt hours. So it's underperforming, but I'll um, do another test at a later date and see how it goes. But I think it's out of the um, two carbons added is looking much better. Okay, this run here is the um, plain cell with no added carbon. Uh, it had an hour and a half charge and it only ever reached just above 1.1 volts and it's only been running for seven minutes so I think the plain uncoated cell must be depleted the um, electrolytes going funny color wonder if it's the iron 3 coming out because the other cells, these cells just had Zinc hexacyanoferrate in the liquid stayed pretty clear. So I'm having a guess it's something to do with the iron 3 stuff. And charging must come out of the cell but doesn't go quite back in. Perhaps we got the wrong cell covered. Which is possible. Hmm. Alright, with that cell, I'll um, unwrap it tomorrow, and um, if I can get that pouch onto the other side of the electrode, the positive side, I'll put the positive in a pouch and leave the negative exposed to the, um, um, yeah, negative exposed to the electrolyte. So I'll um, give the activated carbon one another charge. That should say if the electrolyte's still valid. And uh, we'll get back. Okay, this is the activated carbon one. One hour and seven minutes. Not very good. That one's also dropping for some reason. Only 23 milliamp hours, 
25 milliwatt hours. Hmm. So um, tomorrow I'll try that one, which is the feather carbon one, and see what happens. Now this is the discharge cycle of the um, feather carbon version of the cell. Uh, it had an hour and a half charge, it's still running. We're at 1.3, 59 minutes. Um, it's the only one that's still performing out of all three of them. I don't know what happened to the activated carbon cell, but it's um, power outage. It's like down really badly. Electrolyte's gone black like the rest of it. Um, the plain one, which is that side, I swapped the um, separator and put it on the zinc hexacyanoferrate one to give it a try in a minute. Things I noticed is the um, iron 3 one carbon pad is stuck to the um, electrode. The um, zinc hexacyanoferrate one had a white coating on its surface for some reason. Um, don't know what that is. But I just put it in the pouch. It's got some blue stuff still in the um, pouch, but oh well. Saves waiting three days just to see something. And another thing, um, the positive electrodes are plating zinc onto them, but it doesn't plate the zinc onto the carbon pads, which is a different thing. Um, it's really plated, you have to grind it off to get it off, and you'd notice it sitting on those plates. None of them have the zinc on them. So I'm wondering why that is the case. Maybe it's a voltage thing. There's more, um, less resistance on the stainless steel ones, perhaps. Yeah, undecided. So, um, this thing here has to sort of run for two hours if it's going to be any good. Uh, well, on an hour's charge, it runs for two hours. Um, I don't think the electrolyte's damaged. I just think the um, brown stuff is the iron three metal going around so that's why I swapped the membranes well the separator on that first plane cell so we want iron 3 on the negative side and just zinc on that side so we'll hopefully the separator sort of works being on that side we'll find out anyway I'll um, charge it up after this test and get back Okay, I just made some, um, that was the zinc hexacyanoferrate mixed with the feather carbon. And I, this was the iron 3 hexacyanoferrate. I put some um, 0.5 grams of um, powdered zinc into it. But what's going on here, you reckon? See that? It's 9 degrees. The um, glass is 21. Even that one's cool. 9. And there's the stuff on the glass. I don't know why it's got that cooling effect going on. Maybe it's the acetone evaporating. But it's been here for hmm, about 20 minutes now. It would have thought it would have stopped doing any sort of reaction. I got this out because um, apparently I was watching King of Random. And they mix some super glue with graphite and it went instantly hard but I'm not getting the same effect with my super glue or graphite because I was watching that and then I was like hmm wonder what that is like as a binder so and that's still um it's still wet theirs went hard and crusty instantly so I don't know what my super glue is compared to their super glue but Nothing's going on there. But I'll um, wait for it to dry and check the resistance. Maybe super glue added to the um, graphite makes a good mix. I doubt it though. So I wonder if the temperature's changed on them yet. Well, we're going up a little bit. One degree. No, that one's not so good. That's still under. Must be the evaporation of the acetone, I'd imagine. Uh, the stuff seems to be a bit warmer. Oh no, there's 23 degrees. 
10 degrees. That's 10 degrees off. Hmm. So that one there will be a zinc donor to this. So we'll see if these make any difference. It's um, a different appearance on that cell with the um, carbon. I didn't crush it up completely. So as you can see, there's big sort of chunks of um, zinc hexacyanoferrate with carbon bonded to it or bonded the other way around. Same with there. I didn't want to sort of damage the particles to um, crystals. So we'll see how that goes later. The manganese and feather carbon cell still works, but it doesn't take any more than an hour's charge, I think, by the looks of that runtime. We're at 68 milliwatt hours and 52 milliamp hours on it. And, um, activated carbon one, that's this side, I think. Yeah, it's got the white rubber band. Um, I'll just connect that up. It doesn't even have a voltage, or it didn't this morning for some reason. Well, I'm having trouble getting a voltage off it. See, got it connected, zero. Look, nothing. But if I connect it to the one side to the other plate, I get 0.4 volts. See? I can't work that cell out. Why is it doing that? Is it because the other cell's in the liquid with it? I'll do it again, I'll connect it to that cell, wobble the lead, zero. Absolutely nothing, I'll swap the leads around just in case it's reverse polarity, but it's not. Oh, okay, hang on. So now, it's backwards, why is it backwards? That's just weird. Uh... Oh, hang on, whoops. Wrong cell. <laughs> it's the other side cell. Alright, we'll connect that there. Connect that one. Ah, oh, we got a small amount of voltage. Okay. I'm with it now. Sorry about that. I got the two cells wrong. That one's got the white rubber band under. Right. And this is the one I swapped around, which is now the, oh yeah, that's right, separators on this side now, which is on the positive side, which I will charge up for an hour, and we'll see if there's any difference having the separator around the zinc side, or I mean the zinc hexacyanoferrate side. I'll do that and set a charge. Yeah, that's different, we've got 450 milliamps going through it. I wonder if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Maybe we had the separators on the wrong side of the um, cells. wonder if that actually makes a difference. If, especially if there's um, iron 3 floating around in the electrolyte, there probably would be a difference. It needs to go to the negative side. Alright, I'll monitor it for an hour and see what we get. Okay, the cell's been uncharged for an hour. This cell's the um, plain zinc hexacyanoferrate one, where I put the separator over the zinc hexacyanoferrate cell. So disconnecting the charge. Yeah, it's got a higher voltage this time. But we'll see now. All right. Yep. We didn't even hold 1.9 before, I think. So stop monitoring, we got 20 milliamps and starting our test. The last time we ran that cell, it ran for a half hour on an hour's charge. So reversing the separator seems to um, maybe looks like it's improved it. So we could have been getting cross-contamination from that brown stuff, which I'm pretty sure might be iron 3 coming out of the iron 3 hexacyanoferrate. 
considering I don't, it never ran this um stayed on two bolts before and it's still got some cross contamination the um, membrane was used on the other side with the and it's got some blue stuff still in it I couldn't be bothered waiting three days I got that other cell I want to test All right, I'll get back. Okay, that was a bit interesting. The plain cell where I just changed the separator over to put it on the zinc hexacyanoferrate side. 60 milliwatt hours, 51 milliamp hours. And that's got the least of the materials on all of the cells. It's only around about one gram of active material each on each of the carbon felts, which makes it two grams each side still. Hmm, I'll charge it up again, see if it wasn't a fluke run, and um, see if we get the same result. Okay, it's um, drawing 500 milliamps now on its charge, same voltage setting. Alright, uh, we'll keep it going, see what's going on. Okay, back, the cell's been on charge for an hour and six minutes. Um, milliamps increase for some reason. Um, voltage stayed stable for a while and it's only just sort of on the 33, about, about 40 minute range. So I'll disconnect the charge, see what we get. And the voltage is a bit high now, I noticed. <laughs> it did start off at 2.5 somehow and went up. Oh, power supply. Oh, battery don't look good now. Not so good. Uh, stop monitoring and start a test. 20 milliamp load again. Hmm. All right, so it must have been a fluke shot or an overcharge. I don't think there's no bad leads. There's no bubbling. Oh, that one does. Yeah, right, I'll get back. Well, that was a good run for the cell. Um, two hours and 53 minutes, 59 milliamp hours and 66 milliwatt hours. Well, I don't know what to think about that one now. That was the, um, we changed the membrane over. Hmm. So I'll, um, see what it is tomorrow. That was two consecutive good runs with the membrane being swapped, so, hmm, interesting. I'm gonna have to, um, swap the membrane on that one now and see what goes on. Okay, the cell's been on charge for an hour and a half. I was just um, seeing if it will last longer. Stop monitoring. 20 milliamp test. <coughs> Apparently I found some documentation saying if I had zinc chloride and um, iron three chloride, it would be like an um, electrolyte for a flow cell, apparently. So maybe that's what's going on. Sort of it still works a bit. But that flow cell was around about 100 milliamps for 10 centimetres squared or something. Just do a search on Google for um, zinc chloride and iron chloride flow cell and apparently it can use a standard membrane doesn't need to be an ion transfer one all right we'll see if we get three hours on our charge we nearly pushed three hours the other day so we'll see if anything's going on today okay so the cell's about to run out it ran for three hours and 39 minutes got 88 milliwatt hours and 70, 
four milliamp hours. Not too bad for just changing the electric, um, the, um, what am I talking about? Ah, oh, the separator. That's it. Long day. Yeah. So, um, tomorrow I'll change the separator on the other ones, on the two cells. I'll make that other cell. And I might charge this up once more tonight for two hours and see what happens with a heavier load. Alright, I'll be back later. Okay, it's had a two hour charge, or two hour and twelve minutes. Doing 50 milliamps now. Stop monitoring and starting our test. Alright, it's holding 50 for a bit. Dropping sort of fast. Normally it sits around 1.4. Alright, I'll get back. I'd say around about half hour. If we're lucky. Okay, that little cell looks like it's performing pretty well. One hour and 51 minutes on a 50 milliamp load. And we got 93 milliamp hours and 98 milliwatt hours. That's not a bad run for the plain zinc hexacyanoferrate. Just coat it straight onto the um, carbon pad. So I'll, um, tomorrow I'll swap around the other um, separators on the other two cells. And um, I'll post this video now because it's getting a bit long. And um, thanks for watching.